All right, hello everybody. Peter here once again with another episode of Peter's Content Free Podcast. And as some as some of you may have noticed, it's been quite a while since I've made one of these. That I apologize for. Okay, I apologize sincerely from the depths of my heart. Um, a little update on me: I have just taken a shower. My hair is still wet. Uh, I feel okay right now. I've got a cup, a, a, a pint glass of cold brew here in front of me. I've been drinking that more than regular coffee these days. I don't, to be honest, I, I mean, this has always been a problem that I don't remember what I talked about in my previous podcast, but more than ever now, since it's been months and months since I made my last podcast. And if you want, I will tell you why I think it has been so long since I've made one of these podcasts. I think that is part in due to the fact that I, I have so many other places that I talk uh, and kind of externalize you know, the things in my head, and then I don't feel like I have so many things to say in a podcast. Maybe the... Maybe I should just... All right, so also I'm using a different mic here, which I have closer to my mouth now, but the, pr the good side of this microphone is that it cuts out back ground noises better so like right now I have the air conditioning is on it used to be with my other mic that I wouldn't have to um, I would I would have to turn off my air conditioning every time I wanted to record something and I don't think the air conditioning I don't think you can hear it as much with this microphone the downside is that I haven't really perfected uh, you know like which levels I have to turn this mic to uh, in order to you know and how far away I should have my mouth in order you know for you not to hear me breathing into it and stuff so I apologize if it's not perfect if it's not ideal uh, if I haven't got it all you know completely figured out right now also I have to burp <coughs> oh, excuse me what I'm saying is I have been talking like I've been doing a lot more streaming lately I mean not like the past couple of weeks maybe that kind of thing kind of comes and goes but when I do a lot of streaming I'm just sitting there for hours and hours at a time just kind of chit-chatting and I get a lot of this kind of just random blabbering out of my system that way and then I feel like I shouldn't repeat myself maybe on these podcasts but relatively like you know these podcasts Thousands and thousands of people watch these podcasts, you know, maybe between 10,000. I saw one of my podcasts that had like 60,000 views, which was crazy to me. That's just on YouTube. And then they're also available, you know, on like iTunes, Google something, Spotify, I think, whatever. So there's a lot more people listening to these podcasts than tune into my iTunes, my Twitch streams where I live stream the production of a lot of my, my art and stuff. So I really should not be afraid to repeat some stuff because the small number of people uh, – that tune into both, uh, well, it's just that a small number number of people. So, like I said, I apologize for not making one of these podcasts. Um, but yeah, to return to the most important topic at hand that I always talk about in these podcasts, coffee. Um, yeah, I've been drinking a lot of cold brew coffee. I just buy. Have I talked about this before? I just buy. I've been buying the like one liter jugs of cold brew. At the, at the store. And it's nice because then you just pour it out and drink it. You don't have to like wait five minutes for it to cook or brew, I guess. You can brew. Look, people, every time I like pour out a... See, right there, I popped the mic. Maybe I should get a pop filter. Hmm, I'm sorry. Did that hurt your ears? Also, I'm touching the mic right now. Can you hear that? Anyways, people keep telling me like, Peter, it's so easy to make your own cold brew. You know what's easier to make your own cold brew? Buying a jug of it. So I've been drinking it. I like it. It tastes good. It uh, It's very drinkable. Some people keep telling me it's like way stronger than regular brewed hot coffee. That's okay. The one time I did brew my own coffee is when I, when I, when I, the only time I brewed my own cold brew coffee is when I made a pot of coffee with my French press and then let it sit overnight and then just drink it room temperature. That was about the closest I got, and it's and it tasted fine that time. It is a lot more mellow, less bitter for some reason when it's not hot, which is weird because sometimes when I drink it and it goes goes room temperature right in front of me, it's disgusting. Wait, I might have put it in the fridge. Room temperature coffee is awful. Cold coffee is all right, even if you brewed it hot. 
I don't know. There's some weird chemical reaction that goes on there. Something strange. I'm sure scientists have got it all figured out. Oh, well, I have officially run out of things to talk about. Um, I still, I still enjoy wearing pants over shorts. The downside is that I'm sure my legs are very, very pasty white. Uh, but I guess, you know, so in the event that I ever do wear shorts, my, you know, everyone will notice how white my legs are. But I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. Also, I don't think this is the case, but it could be that I am subconsciously very, uh, you know, embarrassed or shy or, um, you know, that I, I don't like the fact that I have a terrible scar on my knee where I cut it with a chainsaw one time. Did I ever tell that story? I was, it was my 21st birthday and I was cutting up some trees with a chainsaw and then for one minute, uh, for a second, I was suddenly not cutting a tree, but I was cutting my leg. The chainsaw was winding down and I was stepping over the tree that had been felled. And it just touched my knee for a second. I thought, I didn't even notice it at first. I thought it was just a branch that had hit my knee. Just, it felt like just like a flap. Just like felt something like hit my knee. And then I looked down a minute later and there was just like a big rip in my pants. I was like, oh, what's that? And I looked inside the rip. And there was a bunch of blood. And uh, so then I was like, hey, I need help. So then I went to a hospital. And I got like 28 stitches, had to wear a leg brace because it was on my knee so I couldn't bend my leg for like a week. Otherwise I might like rip the stitches out or something. That was a whole thing. I think it, the wound wasn't any worse than it was because for, for two reasons. One, three reasons, okay? First reason, the I didn't have my finger on the trigger. What's that called? Like the throttle of the chainsaw so it was winding down second reason the chainsaw had been freshly sharpened uh so if it had been dull it might have like caught onto the flesh a little bit more as disgusting as that is to say and third reason is i was wearing camo pants and everyone knows that gives you some extra level of protection obviously i should have uh for full protection i should have been wearing kevlar chaps or something maybe that's what you do if you're a professional uh, you know, up to full OSHA standards or whatever. But, you know, chainsaws are dangerous. You got to be careful. You do. You got to stay vigilant at all times because those things will mess you up. If you ever play a zombie video game, get your hands on a chainsaw. Although I would say a baseball bat is probably one of the most satisfying things you can use in a zombie video game. You can get overwhelmed quickly if you get attached by attacked by a horde. But just atta if you get attacked by just a one or two or a couple or three at a time. Baseball bat's pretty great, I think. Pretty satisfying. I will say I'm pretty tired of zombie. Zombie media. I feel like... When, when did all that start? Like, was that one old movie, Night of the Living Dead or something? Then I feel like it, zombie stuff was just cruising for a while. And then suddenly, there was all this zombie stuff. A sudden influx of zombie movies. Zombie TV shows zombie video games and i'm just kind of tired of it you know there's just so much of it i'm ready for the next thing whatever it is and what is it is it is it mummies we've had a bunch of vampires maybe we could have a few more vampires i would like i think i think i would like the next you know modern take on mummies maybe like we have with vamp with, with zombies we could refresh that maybe um I don't know what else there is, though. I'm sure there's a lot of other cool things we haven't really dipped into and really exhausted, like we have zombies. There is that there's that new Edgar Wright movie coming out uh, with zombies. He has a zombie movie coming out, which is as tired of, as I am of zombies. I will probably go see that because from what I can tell with the trailers, for some reason, it also seems like Edgar Wright is tired of zombies. So it might be kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. I'm not sure. I'll probably go see it just because I love Edgar Wright, his movies and stuff, you know. But, I mean, World War Z was cool. I like that take of it, like the swarming masses of zombies climbing up walls and stuff like piles of ants. All right, one of my big problems lately, I'll tell you this, teeth, all right? 
I'm very paranoid and scared and anxious about my teeth. I am, I mean, I brush every day. I don't know if I brush well enough. And look, I don't even brush twice a day. I brush every night before I go, before I wake up. I don't br brush in the morning after I wake up because I don't see the point in that. If anything, brush after you eat breakfast. What's the point of what's the point of brushing before you eat breakfast? You brush your teeth before you go to bed, and then you wake up. Nothing has happened to your teeth. You haven't you haven't put any more food on your teeth between the time you last brushed, and then sometimes people brush again. I'm assuming that's just to get rid of morning breath, right? So just swish some some mouthwash or eat a piece of gum or something until breakfast, if that's what you're doing it for. If anything, eat breakfast and then brush your teeth and then go on with the rest of your day. And that way your teeth are clean and there's not stuff on your teeth, cavitying your teeth all the way until lunch. Anyways, I only brush once a day, but I need to go to the dentist again. But I am terrified to go to the dentist. Last time I went to the dentist, they told me I had nine cavities, and then I went to go get my fillings. Before they told me I had nine cavities, for the whole previous part of my life, I, I never had had any cavities. And they went and they told me I had nine cavities. They even showed me the x-ray, and they were pointing out all the points on my x-ray. where They're like, there's a cavity here, here, and here, and I didn't see anything. I was like, Where? I was asking about the spots they were pointing to, and I couldn't see anything. I was like, there's a cavity here? This looks like exactly like this other spot where you didn't point to. I felt a little bit like I was being scammed or something. So, anyways, I finally called around like a few weeks ago. I found some other um, dental office that would take my janky form of insurance or discount, you know, dental discount card that I got for myself so that it wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg just to get a checkup and maybe fillings or whatever if I really needed them. Just because I finally got you know, like paranoid about them. Like, do I have a bunch of rotten teeth in my mouth? Like every now and then I just feel like a tiny, like a, I don't have like t a toothache or anything. But every now and then I just feel like a tiny twinge or something in my tooth. And that's, that's probably just part of being alive. You just, you know, you just, feel random aches and pains in your body sometimes, you know, just like something, a little, a little twinge here, a little ache there. Sometimes they're in, in my mouth somewhere. Sometimes it's in my leg or my arm or my hand or my somewhere in my chest. Those are the worrying ones. Also, I have tons of headaches. I'd probably be more worried about those. There's probably like a tumor in my head somewhere. Maybe I, I have a tumor, and if I ever got taken out, I, I would be a totally different person. That'd be weird. I would start liking, I would start liking math and, and Naruto. Who knows? I made the dentist appointment and then I slept through it. And now I'm afraid if I call them again, because this is one of the only places I called that didn't have, that had an appointment like within the week. All the rest of the places I called either didn't take my discount card or had appointments that were, you know, they were filled, they were filled for like a month or two. So I would, I would have had to wait and I didn't feel like waiting. Maybe I should just wait. I don't know. I probably forget about it. I mean, I even put it in my phone and everything, but I slept through it because my sleep schedule is so weird. I'll talk about that more later. I slept through it and then I'm afraid to call back now. Like, will they be like, no, you blew your one chance. We can't have people, you know. You know, scheduling appointments, not showing up, it throws off our whole business or whatever. So I didn't go, and I just need to call back again. I can't even remember which place it was. I have to start my whole research over again. I, w I was expecting them to send me, an, you know, they usually send me send you like a reminder text or a reminder call or a reminder email or something. They didn't send me any of that. So I would like to place maybe like a tiny bit of the blame on them. I don't know if that really would have solved the problem, but it might have helped. So I need to overcome my fear and go to the dentist, you know, just in case there are, you know, cavities in my teeth. I'm very afraid of finding out the awful truth, but I need to face my fears in that regard. I do. I would like to live on in blissful ignorance. A big part of me would like to live on in blissful ignorance about the, the condition of my teeth. But I don't think that's the best thing for me. 
I just don't like going to the dentist. I don't like when they scrape and poke and prod and drill and at my teeth and stuff. It's just a terrible, terrible experience for me. It's, I'm just like, it's probably one of my phobias, the dentist. I don't know why. It just, it's awful for me. But more about my sleep schedule, I, fig- I think I figured out a way to explain why my sleep schedule is so weird. Look, um, most people, they sleep for, they probably, I don't know about most people, but a lot of people probably sleep for the, a, a set amount of time. People who have like a set sleep schedule, they're in a rhythm, right? Say you sleep for six hours every night. That means um, you're probably awake for 18 hours every day, right? This is just hypothetical because people sleep for all, you know, some people sleep for four hours a night, some people sleep for six, some people sleep for eight uh, or whatever. But say you sleep for six hours a night, this means you're awake for 18 hours during the day and then your life goes on. My deal is I sleep for seven and a half hours every night. Every night I sleep for seven and a half hours. I set my alarm. I No, no, I don't set an alarm. I, sl- I set a timer, seven and a half hours. But the amount of time I stay awake does not add up to 24. The amount of time I stay awake can be 10 hours or you know, 16 hours or 20 hours or 24 hours. So that's, what's, that's what messes up my sleep schedule. The, the amount of time I stay awake and the amount of time I'm asleep does not add up to 24, and that's what makes it all weird and wacky. Does that make sense? That's why it's always, I, I call it rotating around the clock, my sleep schedule is. Usually I think my I'm awake for more than my allotted, wait, what is 24 minus 7.5? 24 minus 8 would be 16, right? So 16 and a half? Anyways, I'm probably awake for like 20 hours usually. I don't know. I don't know. But look, the, the, the main times when I, the exception of that is when I'm having a bad day. Sometimes you just have a bad day or a bum start to your day. It's just not going well. And those days, I try to go to bed early just to end the day quicker and have a fresh start sooner. The struggle is I'm usually not as tired because that's when I go to sleep most of the time is just when I'm like nodding off. I'm like exhausted because then it feels great to go to bed, right? It feels great to go to bed. I lie down. I'm yawning. Just like incredible you know, just like body rending yawns. I can't stop. My eyes are squinted shut. My my jaws about to dislocate. I'm yawning so hard. I'm nodding off in front of my computer. I don't know if this is health, healthy, but then I just go to bed and I just pass out. And I wake up and I restart the day. But sometimes when I'm having a bad day, I want to go to bed sooner just to restart it. But those are also the days when I can't fall asleep because I haven't been awake for that long. And it's so frustrating to me, right? Because I, all I want to do is fall asleep and restart the day. Just I'm just lying there, tossing and turning, wishing I could fall asleep. I'm sure there are drugs to help me fall asleep. I don't want to. I don't think I want to start abusing drugs that way. I don't think I want to be that guy taking like sleeping pills and stuff all the time, or other substances to help me sleep. I think that's a risky, slippery slope. I don't want to delve into that. Also, I've started going to some classes. I have a mm, tenuous at best relationship with classes. I I mean, sometimes I sign up for, you know, I get like a brief interest in something that I want to know how to do a little better. So I start to, you know, I find like a local class, you know, at a community college or some sort of workshop, whatever it is, you know, when I lived in Chicago, for example, I think I took like a printmaking class where I was supposed to learn how to do like copper plate printing and stuff at some printmaking studio and they had all the cool stuff there like I would just all I had to do was take some materials like uh, some plates of copper and maybe like an engraver or something and they had all the other stuff there you know like because you had to do all like these acid baths and stuff and they were doing other cool stuff there like the the ones where you have these those huge blocks of what is it limestone and they had big printing presses and 
it was cool. Uh, but for some reason, with these classes, uh, I've done it with this printmaking class. I've done it with an oil painting class I went to. I've done it with just a regular drawing class I went to. I would, and, and now I've done it with a sign language class that I signed up for. I sign up for these classes sometimes uh, for ridiculous prices. And these are the type of classes where you go one day a week for, you know, like five weeks or seven weeks or something, you know. Um, you know, I think one time I paid, like, you know, like two, three hundred dollars. But inevitably, it seems like I go for two or three classes. I go for two or three weeks and then I don't go anymore. I lose interest. I don't really know if I like that sort of, I don't know what it is, is about the class setting or what it is about me that I just lose interest. I lose motivation. I, I just don't feel like going back. I guess I, I also did this with a cake decorating class when I lived, well, when I worked at Michael's. When I worked there, I could take, sometimes I had classes and I could take the classes for free. I was like, what the heck? I'll take a, I'll take a tech, cake decorating class. And it was cool. You know, I learned how, like the basics of, you know, the basics that I have since forgotten about the different types of, uh, well, they have different types of, what's it called? Icing. They have like, you know, the cream cheese icing and the, what, what buttercream icing or something. I don't remember the names, but some of the icings, for example, taste better. So you want to do, use this type of icing to coat the cake in. But other types of icing that don't taste quite as good are maybe better for doing the detail work. But that's okay because you tend to have less of that on there. Um, maybe something like that. And then there's the whole thing of like fondant, which doesn't taste good at all, but you can do in incredible, incredible details and uh, build stuff with it. Fondant is pretty much edible plastic, I guess. And I only go, you know, I only go for two or three sessions, and then I just, uh, I just drop off the map, and I guess people wonder where I went for this for the sign language class. I'm not even sure why I signed up for that. I just got it in my head maybe that it'd be good to know how to do sign language, and I'm sure it would be good to know how to do sign language. Like, there's a whole, I mean, I haven't even really met a deaf person. It's not like there was a point in my life where I was where I like met a deaf person and people were signing and I felt left out or I wish I had some way to talk to them or something. But you know, I guess I thought in the back of my head, oh, maybe if I did some videos. But that's the thing. I'm not even like I don't even show myself on the videos that much. Sometimes in my intros to my videos I'm there and I could have been using my signing. Maybe I could have used like a green screen and just for all my videos just had my hands on the screen signing stuff or something, but I guess that's what subtitles are for. I don't even put subtitles on my videos, which isn't very, would that be called handicap accessible? Is that a handicap to say? I don't know. It's not friendly to, to deaf people, I guess. I'm not sure what my thought was, but the, regardless, I didn't go back after two or three classes, and thankfully they sent, they sent me, they were very kind about it. This was one of the cheaper classes I went to. It was like $60 for, for like eight weeks of instruction, and they sent me an email a, a little while ago saying, "Hey, we noticed you don't you you stopped coming. We're, we're we can uh, transfer you to a another set of classes, you know, this winter or something or this summer if you want. And you can just pick right up where you left off or something like that." It's like, yeah, that sounds interesting, but no, you know, I think I've lost interest. Maybe that's just what happens. I just lose interest. I get little like urges, you know. I, I send out feelers in direction, see if it's what I want to do. And usually it ends up not being what I want to do for some reason. There is one major exception, uh, which is I've started taking guitar lessons. And I've done that for like five or six weeks now. And I have not missed a single class. And I think the difference here, which is something that my mom pointed out to me, I do talk on... I don't like talking on the phone. I do talk on my to my mom on the phone every now and then, um, every Mother's Day usually, and sometimes on her birthday or something, or every now and then in between. My parents kind of know that I don't really like talking on the phone, but they know uh, that I put up with it every now and then. Well, I have to burp again. What is, what is it about talking that makes you have to burp? I don't know. Maybe I just burp all the time, but it's just inconvenient, so I notice it when I'm talking. Anyway, so I was talking to her, and I mentioned this problem to her, and she's like, maybe it's because the guitar lessons, this is a one-on-one -on -one 
class and all the other classes I've been signing up for and dropping out of, those have been group sessions. Maybe that's what I need, you know, that one-on-one attention. You think so? I don't know. But I've been going to the guitar lessons. I like them. Uh, I haven't missed any of them. I'm going to miss one soon because I'm going camping uh, in Yosemite. We're going to fly into San Francisco, which doesn't look good because apparently on the forecast, they're having like a bunch of snow, having like crazy snowstorms all of a sudden. I thought it was going to be like hot summer, like everyone always tells me, California, you know? It's always it's always amazing out there. Everyone's always like bragging about the weather in California, how it's always amazing and never this, always that, so on and so forth. And then I look up the weather for when, and like a week beforehand, a week before we're going, snowstorms. I think the days for when we're going to be there, it's going to be okay, but still, it's just like, I was playing on it, you know, walking around shorts and a t-shirt the whole time. Am I going to have to take like three sleeping bags to bundle in up at night, you know? But yeah, the, the guitar lessons are going well. I'm kind of having fun with the the music right now. It's like a fresh, it's like fresh, new, unexplored territory. I've been having fun making songs. You know, I put out like a little album on Spotify. It's terrible, right? It's like not good music, but that's okay because it like feels new and different. I, I don't want to say that I'm getting bored of drawing, but you know, I've been like, I've been drawing for like 10 years. So, I don't know, maybe I need to find out some different way to mix it up a little bit with drawing or something. I don't know. I don't want to pressure myself with it too much. I've never been one to make myself draw when I don't feel like drawing, which is a little bit of a struggle for me when, like, you know, I support myself with posting drawing content on YouTube. That's a little bit tough. I don't even know what I'm going to do for this video. I, I'll probably draw something. I mean, I can still draw, and I like drawing. I just, sometimes I feel like drawing a whole bunch, and then sometimes I don't, and I don't. People ask me, you know, Peter, do you draw every day? And no, I don't draw every day. I go for, I, I don't draw all the time. You know, there's lots of times when I don't draw, and that's okay. I think a, a good way to ruin something for yourself is to, like, force yourself to do it. I don't know. Maybe there's... You know, it depends on your motivations and what your goals are. But the the guitar is fun and the music and you know, I have like some little I have like some little synthesizers and keyboards I've been messing around with, making dumb little songs that are fun. I make the songs, um they like sound good to me while I'm making them and I post them on SoundCloud and then tweet them out and then I <laughs> I like listen to them the next day. I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is like so bad. But it's okay, you just gotta just got to put it out there, move on, make the next thing. It's okay, all right? You're not going to be good at it right away. You're not probably not even going to be good at it after a long time. You might, you might be good at it after a long, long time, maybe. But the key thing is that you're having fun experimenting and exploring it. Really, the only problem if you're not good at it is if you're like in competitions or something. But I'm not in a competition, so everything's peachy, and we're good to go. So yeah, enjoying the guitar lessons. Um, those are also expensive. I think it's like, I think it was like five hundred dollars for eight weeks. Something that came down to about thirty dollar. It came down to thirty dollars and fifty cents per class per session, right? Which really bothered me because they're half hour sessions and like the. I I feel like we all have a little bit of a perfectionist inside of us that if you take a 30-minute class, wouldn't it just be kind of satisfying if it was an even $30? Like, why is it $30.50? Like, where did that 50 cents come from? Why couldn't they just swallow the extra 50 cents per, per session and make it 30 bucks? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm going to take another sip of my coffee here. I'm getting a little parched, you know. I I think it'd be even better if it was $31. Just this 50 cents seems, seems so ham-fisted. Like, they probably calculated the overall price, but the overall price 
you know, the whole buying all eight weeks or whatever is not even not rounded out either. I don't know how they they arrived at these numbers, but I'm not happy with it. I'll tell you that much. I would rather pay $31 per session. I mean, that's not satisfying either. Sometimes, you know, numbers don't always have to be, you know, perfectly rounded out. Like when I set my alarm, I mean, my timer for falling asleep, I set it for seven hours, 27 minutes, and 14 seconds. Like that's a really satisfying number to me for some reason. I could never set it to seven hours and 30 minutes and zero seconds like that. I think it's because if I set it for seven hours, 30 minutes and zero seconds, then I would feel like it was, I had to, like it was some perfect amount of time that I had to sleep for. And I would feel stressful about getting, you know, I set the timer and then I feel like I'd have to fall asleep right away to get that seven hours and 30 minutes. But if it's like not an exact amount of time, like seven hour, 30 minutes, then I feel like it's a little bit less. The stakes aren't as high, right? But even then, some the numbers matter a little bit more because seven hours, 27 minutes, 14 seconds is far more satisfying to me than seven hours, 26 minutes and 14 seconds. Seven hours, 28 minutes and 14 seconds is okay. Seven hours, 20, 29 is also really good. 30, no. 31, okay. 32, no. 30. I think for the minutes, for the minute, um, column, I really need an odd number. And then for the seconds column, I need an even number for some reason. I don't know the logic behind this seven hours. Then I need an odd number for the minutes. I'm just trying. I'm like, I have my phone out right now playing with the timer, trying out different combinations of numbers. Seven hours, 21 minutes, 12 seconds. That's fine with me. Seven hours, 22 minutes and 11 seconds, not nearly as good. First of all, there's too many repeated numbers there. So there's mm, 34 minutes, 10 seconds, could be worse. I gotta go back to, I'll find a new, let me find a new combination here that works good. Maybe over, I can't do over 30 minutes because I already feel bad about sleeping for so long. Every time I lie down and go to bed and I set my timer for seven hours, 27 minutes and 14 seconds, which is what I'm setting it back to now. Oh, I feel for like, a, when I press that start button on the timer, I'm filled with a sense of dread that I'm signing part of my life away. A whole seven hours, 27 minutes, and 14 seconds of my life is just going to be gone, irretrievable, uselessly spent, unconscious, and immobile in my bed. It really bothers me. I'm sure I've talked about this before, but I really, I mean, I love sleeping. I love the feeling of sleeping. I love falling asleep when I'm really tired, but the, the f knowing that that's like seven hours, I'm... I feel like I'm wasting it. I know I'm not wasting it because you need to sleep. The body needs sleep. You function better when you've had rest. But it really bothers me. That's probably why I stay up for so long sometimes. I just try to put off the inevitable for as long as possible. It's not healthy, I know, but... If there was some... In the future, if there's like some sort of augment... You know how like in video games you can get like power-ups, you know? There's like a, I have been playing Stardew Valley a little bit more. For a while, Stardew Valley bothered me because it was, it was like so heavy handed with the passage of time. You know, it's got like the whole game is built around the clock. It's built around the seasons passing, the years passing, which is something that al already makes me anxious in real life. So then it was bothering me. All, that was all also a, a core mechanic of the video game some reason it's not bothering me anymore. I think I'm just mostly ignoring it. I think for a long time I thought there was like an end objective to Stardew Valley that I had to get stuff done by a certain time or something. Maybe there's a little bit, but I don't think there's really. But anyways, it's mostly not bothering me anymore. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, I think like if in that game there was a way to buy some sort of upgrade that would make it so that you could wake up earlier or go to bed later, you know, have more hours in the day, I would definitely do that. Just like in real life, if one day we get augments, you know, people 
and we already do a little bit, you know, with like laser eye surgery and stuff like that. But if we get more augments so it, that makes it so we don't need as much sleep, like if I could get some sort of thing in my brain that would make it so that I could get four hours of sleep and feel like I got eight hours of sleep, I bet so many people would go for that. They would probably, the, you know, the main thing that would keep people from going for that is there would probably be some, be some awful, it'd probably be very expensive and there would probably be some awful side effects. People would be very hesitant to uh, adopt this new technology at first, depending on how it was marketed and who it was marketed by. If it was an Apple product, they'd probably do okay, d despite the public outrage. And then, and then like 10 years later, it would probably turn out that this thing was giving everyone cancer or something you know like how like after cell phones were invented like a while later years later everyone there was like this huge thing about how everyone thought cell phones were giving everyone cancer right but i don't think they really were maybe they are everyone holding all these cell phones next to their head for hours and hours every day with the cell phone signals going right through their head and then there was the whole thing about people all these men holding laptops on their laps in the heat of the laptops, uh, like baking their balls and making everyone going, uh, go, not inert, what's the word, uh, not insensitive, uh, you know, so they couldn't have kids or whatever, like too much heat for too long. I also get paranoid about that, like can the same thing happen if you sit in a hot tub for too long or stay in the shower for too long? Sometimes I stay in the shower for so long with the water so hot that I give myself a low-grade fever. I, s I step out of the shower and I'm like lightheaded, like all the symptoms of a fever really. But sometimes, you know, that's the main thing I do. That's my main form of relief when I have a headache is to just stand in the shower until all the hot water is gone. But yeah, with every, it seems like these days there's ups and downs to everything. With every like new advance, with every good thing you can do, it seems like there's also a downside. Whenever I try to like eat healthy, whenever I tell someone about like this new healthy thing I'm trying to do, like a new healthy food I'm eating, a this, a that, they're always like, yeah, but that actually has a lot of this in it. That actually will give you that. This will do this. This will do that. And then I just feel so defeated all the time. Everyone has a downside to everything. And I just feel like, well, I'm just going to go back to eating whatever the heck I was eating before. There is a, there is a, a workout center here at my apartment complex, and they have treadmills, which I want to start running on more. I've run on them a few times, but I have this weird phobia of gyms. I was just like very uneasy in them. You know, everyone in there seems like they're, they like live there. They've got all the, the good workout clothes, you know, like cool tank tops with like cool Nike logos on them and like, they have like cool stripes on the back, you know, what I'm talking about and cool sh socks with stripes on them. And, and I, and I go in there, I just got like shorts and a t shirt and I want to put on like my bandana so I don't, I look like some weird hippie guy, you know, cause I got like my map my flower bandana on so I don't get sweat in my eyes. At least I do have AirPods now. AirPods. Look, I'm no Apple fanboy. And I kind of bought AirPods on a whim just because I had a couple hundred dollars lying around. But those are uh, one of the, my favorite things I've bought in a while. I'm not sponsored to say this anyway either. But it's like it's hard to explain how much better those are. Obviously, if you can't afford them, don't get them. But... It's just like so much nicer to not have to worry about untangling cords, cords getting caught on stuff. I don't know. It's just like not, you know, being able to like, it's just nice. I don't know. I won't go on too long about it because I feel like I'm like a sellout or something, but I like my AirPods. They work good. They charge fast and they're good for working out too. Some people, like my sister, uh, Apple, Apple AirPods, Apple AirPods, they don't fit in her ears. Like they, she puts them in there and they just kind of sit in there and they fall out so easily. I don't know. There, some people's ears are just different. And thankfully, uh, AirPods stay in my ears very easily. I think my ears are, they have like deep notches, deep, deep, deep caves for the AirPods to sit in. So they stay in there good. 
they don't fall out when I'm running or anything. Some people, you know, they get those nice Bluetooth ones, you know, that hook around the outside of your ear and everything. Yeah, but I go running sometimes. That's pretty much the only time sometimes I listen to a a podcast. So when I'm running or when I'm driving, sometimes I listen to podcasts. I've been listening. Really, the only podcast I've ever listened to is uh, some Dan Carlin, Hardcore History. That stuff's pretty interesting. The rest of the time, I can't really listen to podcasts. You know, it'd be great if I could listen to podcasts while I'm doing video editing because I spend so much time sitting around doing video editing. And really my go-to is I just put, you know, I have so many subscriptions. I have a Netflix subscription. I have an Amazon Prime subscription. I have a Hulu subscription. And then I watch Twitch and I subscribe to some channels on Twitch. And then even on Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to more channels on Twitch, you know, HBO subscription, Showtime subscription, Cinemax subscription. Uh, I don't even want to think about how much I spend on spend per month on these subscriptions, but I think it's worth it for me because I spend so much time watching TV and movies while I do video editing. <sighs> it's not the most... I, I edit videos faster if I'm only listening to something and not watching so every now and then I muster up the willpower to just listen to music while I edit and I really focus in and the editing goes like I, I, I'm not good at saying percentages and maybe like a hundred and maybe like 75 percent faster what one and I don't know is that faster or 75 percent faster or slower a hundred is a hundred percent faster twice as fast is zero percent faster the same speed or is that no speed at all it's not quite twice as fast is what i'm trying to say if you say half as fast that means you're slowing down 1.75 times as fast i think is a good way to say it if i'm just listening to music but see that would be a good time to listen to podcasts but my brain wanders too much and uh, I don't know, I get, no, no, I think I could listen to podcasts, but I get bored for some reason. Maybe I could, maybe I could. I listen to some, I listen to some, some audiobooks. I can't do audiobooks as much because my brain really does wander and I keep having to rewind and I can't remember how long I've been, I've been daydreaming for and how much of the story I've missed. Podcasts are better in that regard because uh, there's no, there's usually not as much of a storyline depending on the podcast. You can miss a couple things and, uh, you can just keep listening and it's okay, right? But most of the time I just like, <laughs> I've watched a lot of movies, okay? I've watched a lot of TV shows, uh, just kind of out of the corner of my eye on the other monitor while I edit the videos. It slows me down a little bit, you know, because every now and then I get distracted by, you know, if it's like there's a really interesting scene or a fight scene or something, you know, I look over and watch it. <laughs> but, you know, I just <sighs> just try to figure out the best way to do it that keeps me sane. For a while, I do have a one. I do have a video editor that I pay sometimes to edit some of my videos, just the boring parts, because I record myself um, editing. I mean, I record myself drawing while I stream on Twitch, which makes it so that uh, there's a lot of tiny little breaks in my recordings when I stop to talk and chat. And if I didn't edit my videos at all, there would be it'd be very jumpy and stuttery. So I spend hours and hours going through my video footage taking out all the, the spots where I take my hand off the paper, sometimes it feels like it, it, it takes almost as long to edit the videos as it did to draw the, paper, draw the drawing in the first place. You know? And so, sometimes I spend you know, like, like 20 hours drawing a drawing, and it's so much footage to go through. Sometimes I, 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 I cop out a little bit and just like cut out a couple hours of footage here and there just to make my work a little bit easier for me. I don't think people really notice. It's not that big of a deal. People don't mind a little bit of fast forwarding. It's fine. You don't got to show everything. You know, just like in movies, they don't show everything. That used to really bother me in movies. I'm like, this is supposed to be a realistic movie, but they never, they never show this guy go into the bathroom. When, when and where does this guy go to the bathroom? He's been trapped in this room for three days. There's no poop in the corner. You know, it's so unrealistic and it would really bother me. But I'm just like, no, actually, it's probably better that way, isn't it? Yeah. You got to make creative decisions like that sometimes. 
in some movies it would be in some there are some movies you know where they would have to poop in the corner but that's fine that those movies probably don't do quite as well in theater just artistic choices i guess but like i said sometimes i do have this guy who i send the, mo the video footage off to who does the uh the really painstaking video editing for me cutting out all the little the little pauses for me and uh then he sends back the the footage to me and then i i i re i edit it back into like a, a whole completed video like he doesn't make the whole video for me i still have my my creative vision you know i still uh, still put in my intro in there sometimes and put in my you know ending and put in my commentary and everything and um I don't know. Also, this one guy messaged me on Instagram saying he was a computer science major or something. And he could, he's like, I think I can make a program where I can make it automatically edit out all the, the spots where nothing is changing the video, you know, make it automatically take out these sections where you're not drawing. And I was like, that's awesome. He's like, I just need you to send me, uh, you know, like a, like a little section of video, um, where you draw and then stop drawing and then draw again. I was like, that's awesome. All right, I'll do it. And then I just like never did it. And I feel like it's probably too late. And it's like, that's like the story of my life now. I feel like there's been so many great opportunities. I've just been too lazy to follow up on. I wonder how many great things I've passed up just because I was like, yeah, I should do that. And then I just didn't. I try not to think about too much. That's very, very anxiety inducing. All the what ifs, right? Don't don't go there, okay? That's not that's not healthy mentally. Just keep your eyes open. Try to do better for the next time. Okay. Be good to yourself um, as far as your future life goes. But you know, you don't gotta do everything either. Life's not all about being the most successful person in the world, okay? It's, it's better to just find a way to be happy, maybe, with the way you are right now. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I won't try to spew a bunch of weird philosophical stuff at you when I don't know. Maybe, see, I was thinking maybe I can still send him the footage, but this is graduation season right now, and I keep thinking he's probably he probably just graduated, and he's not doing this stuff anymore. It would be so easy for me to send him the footage. Just like a little video clip. I should do it. I'm going to do it after I record this, okay? Probably. I'll probably do it. Probably I will. Anyways, what else is there? Huh? What else happening in my life? I uh, One thing I enjoy is when it... This is worth saying. One thing I enjoy is when it rains... I mean, rain in general is pretty great, but then there's cars parked, just like a little shower, a little rain shower, right? There are cars parked, parking spots, or by the side of the road is even better because, you know, the road, I think this is how the Romans designed it. The road is a little bit arched, right? It's a little bit curved, so there's not, you know, so there's not standing water on the road so to, to combat puddles, Right? It's arched, so there's cars parked parallel parking on the side of the road. So it rains a little bit, and then there's dry spots under the cars if there's not too much rain. And then I like the little dribbles of water that dribble down sideways under the car. For some reason, that's just so satisfying to me. I like that a lot. It's, it's kind of like those uh, melty crayon arts that people make. Have you seen those? Someone will draw. This is what they always do. They draw a person at the bottom of the paper holding an umbrella, and then they put a bunch of crayons at the top, and then, I don't know, what do you do? Hit it with a hair dryer or a heat gun or put it in the oven or something, and it dribbles down and somehow goes around the umbrella, and you made a colorful rainstorm? How many times have I seen that? I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to you know, insult anyone's art. That's pretty funny. Hey, if you want to go make melty crayon art, go do it. I'll probably do it someday. I probably won't do the umbrella thing. But I mean, it's cool. I'll have to figure out 
I might do it if I could figure out a way to combine the crayon art with another medium, you know? Once you've melted the crayons across the paper, I feel like it's hard to draw on top of that because crayons are so waxy. What can draw on top of wax? A paint pen, maybe? I feel like that would even be a little bit difficult. Spray paint, maybe. You could do a stencil, perhaps. Um, I don't know. You could, if you did a certain color, if you did colored paper under the crayons, you could scrape it away like a scratch board, scrape away the art, the, 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 the melted wax. If you had a consistent layer of it, that could be interesting, couldn't it? I think so. Um, I bought a couple of watches on the internet. I'm not really a big watch wearer. There's a big trend these days to, uh, you know, buy those Apple smartwatches. I know I'm talking about Apple a lot this episode. I'm sorry. Um, Apple, uh, Apple smartwatches are a big thing, but I haven't gotten one yet. I mean, I considered it, but I don't really know what I'd use it for. A lot of my friends track each other's steps uh, with these watches, which I think is, that part might be good for me. I do go on walks pretty steadily, pretty consistently since I live down, downtown. If I want to go buy a sandwich or some Chinese food or something, I got to go for a walk. I think that's good for me. Mm, excuse me. I think walking is good. I think it would be interesting to track my steps and maybe I think it, it might help motivate me, you know, to maybe go run the treadmill more if I had a, an Apple watch. But my main problem with these Apple watches is they are <sighs> really ugly to me. I don't want one of those on my wrist. Maybe if they ever come up with a round one, I will get one. I think someone told me they are coming up with a round one. They do have a lot of good wristband options. I think that is good, but I just don't like the, the square form vector. Mm, that, that rounded corner, was that called the bezel? I don't, I don't like how they look. I think they look awful, actually. If they got, if they got maybe a, a, a round one, I might get it. I don't know how it'd work. I mean, uh, and so, but the, the watches I got, I got a couple of Casios. Um, I got, oh, here they are, sorry. Um, two Casios. I got a silver one and a gold one. I think one was $15 and the other one was 30 and they look pretty good. You know, like that classic Casio uh, style, you know, they've got the, it says alarm chrono on it. It's got like a little button for the digital screen to light up. It's got a light. It's got a start stop on it. It says water resist. But the bad thing about these is that they have these metal, metal wrist bands that, uh, when I put them on, they pull the hairs on my wrist, and then sometimes I take these off and look at, oh, I dropped it. Still working. Then I take it off and I look at the inside of the wristband and I see all of my wrist hairs pinched inside the wristband and I like try to pull them out, but they're like really in there. Like, how is this such a popular design? Does this not happen to anyone else? Do, are my wrist hairs of a smaller diameter than other people's wrist hairs that mine are the only ones that get caught in these wristbands? Or does everyone else, are you just supposed to power through and wear it for a couple months until it, it balds that area of your wrist? Is that what's supposed to happen? Or are you just supposed to, I think my area of that area of my wrist is a little more bald, even just after the small amount of time I have worn it. Also, I can't really tell, I can't figure out the ideal tightness of the wristband. Uh, you know, like, should it be able, how far up should it be able to slide on my arm? I don't like it to slide too far up, but if I tighten it too much so it doesn't slide too far up, then it like, then it feel, obviously it feels too tight. And then sometimes, you know, I can't bend my wrist too far back. Also, this is the first time I'm wearing my, my watches on my non-dominant hand. I'm wearing them on my left hand. The first time I got a watch when I was like eight years old or something, I immediately, without thinking, just like in, almost instinctively, put it on my right hand. Because I was like, yep, yeah, this, this feels right. This is where my watch goes. This is where I'm going to put it. And then like whoever was with me, like maybe my mom or my dad or something, was like, no, no, no. 
you put it on your you put it on your other hand. I'm like, no, I don't think so. It goes it goes right here. I even tried putting it on my left hand. I couldn't even I, d- I couldn't even figure out how to do it. Like my my brain didn't work that way. Like even though I was do I was like latching it up with my right hand, my dominant hand. I like couldn't figure out how to do it. Then once I got it on there, it felt all weird. It felt like I had like some like some weird foreign object attached to my wrist. But when I put it on my right hand, uh, I'm doing it right now. Let me see. Let me see here. I mean, yeah, that feels good. That feels good. The major downside to wearing a watch on your right hand is that I use my right hand for things like writing and drawing. And so you rest it on the desk or the paper a lot. And sometimes it can kind of feel weird when you're resting on stuff. And my, my dad said his favorite reason for wearing his watch on his left hand is that when he's writing dates, you know, if he has to date something, I guess at his work he has to date things a lot. You know, what is it? Saturday the 18th at this moment, 1240. He can turn his wrist on his left hand and look at the date while he's writing. It's harder to do that when it's on my, on the hand I'm writing with. That wasn't a big enough reason for me, but that was back in school before I had a, you know, a smartphone in my pocket. I could, I could check the time with all the time. I don't know. Do you think wristwatch manufacturers lobbied against smartphones and phones in general? You know, that people carrying the, the, the time around in their pocket. I guess people who made pocket watches lobbied against wrist watches. Unless these are all the same companies. Hopefully they just changed with the times if they were smart, right? You know, the world keeps moving on. Also, I have an old water bottle, an old Nalgene that I've been using for years it's got all sorts of stickers on it. It's disgusting. Like I hardly ever watch it, wash it, but I keep drinking water out of it. The water tastes fine. You know, every now and then I look inside it, like the little lip, the inside of the neck, you know, and I just like wipe it out and it looks weird, but I wash it every now and then. And then I lost it for like three days. I didn't know where it was. So I ordered a new water bottle, same size, different color. It looks nice. But then immediately is like the same day. The new water bottle got here. Of course, I found the old water bottle. It was under one of my car seats, of course. So now I have two water bottles. Let me take a sip from the new one. Now see, the new one (laughs) smells weird. Do you think it's a different type of plastic or do you think it's just because it's newer? Let me see. This one says Nalgene, BPA-free, 100 milliliters. Really, all it says. This one also. This one says the exact same thing. They all say BPA free on them because I remember a few years ago there was a whole big thing about these Nalgene bottles having BPA, some sort of chemical, in the plastic, and then apparently at ex- at extreme temperatures, maybe just like if you let it out and left it out in the sun, or maybe if it got really cold. They, they, people claimed that if you, uh, people claimed that this BPA, this chemical would seep out of the plastic into the water, then you drink the water and then you would get cancer. So they did like a recall and now they make them without BPA in the plastic. That's the story as far as I know it. Also, apparently... I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently I've heard that if you break one of these Nalgene bottles, I, uh, if you break one, if you send them the pieces in the mail, they'll send you a new one for free. That's what I've heard. I actually don't know if that's true or not, though. I should test it out with this new one, though. I'm not sure of a good way to break it, though. I'm squeezing it. I'm, like, locking my fingers around it right now, and it is kind of flexing between my hands. Uh, I feel like that's a really good way to hurt myself though because I feel like if it broke while I was squeezing it really hard, I could get like stabbed by a shard. I have, I used to work at that youth camp where, uh, you know, and we would, there were like cliffs there, like 150 foot cliffs where people would do rock climbing and rappelling and stuff. And I have seen one of these Nalgene's fall all the way off those 150 foot cliffs. 
and it just bounced at the bottom. But that was an empty bottle. I think if it was full of water, it would almost certainly break. I'm pretty sure it would, because it'd be so much heavier, and there's all these physics things at play there, which I, I don't have the time to explain to you right now. The nice thing about these, I have, the nice thing about having two watches is that I can wear one on each wrist and overcome the problem of, you know, not having a wrist to look at or not. Also, I've synced up uh, probably about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I synced up these watches perfectly. They were exactly in sync to the second. Like they were chained, the seconds were ticking by exactly at the same time. But now I have a silver one here and a gold one, right? The gold one is, let me see here. Let me wait till it gets to exactly a minute and I'll tell you in 10 seconds, I can tell you so I can do the math very easily in my head without having, it's hard to do this subtraction math when the numbers are changing constantly. The gold one is 17 seconds behind now. Or another way to put that is the silver one is 17 seconds ahead. And I don't know what to make of that. Should I, should I be worried? Are these inaccurate watches? They say the man with two watches never knows what time it is. I know it's 1245, but I'm not sure. At, at some point soon, the silver one's going to say 1246, and for 17 seconds, the gold one's going to say 1245. It's true. It is a little bit torturous to have two watches that don't say exactly the same time. <sighs> yep, so uh, like I said, I don't, I don't really know what number of podcast this is um i do make some other videos that are pretty similar to podcasts you know like i have some real-time drawing videos i have some other kind of long videos but i guess the downside to those is i don't post the audio on like other streaming services so i apologize for that let me know what other kind of videos you like i don't know what the heck is up with my youtube channel to be honest if i i feel bad complaining about it you know because it feels like kind of whiny for someone who has like a such a great, you know, opportunity to do this as a living. But, you know, like what, I don't really know. You know, I've never done this before. I've never had like, I don't have like a lifetime of experience having a YouTube channel. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But it is weird to me having 700,000 subscribers and then, you know, getting like between twenty and 40,000 views on every video, depending on the video. Some have more, some have less. Most have more, I guess. It's like, uh, it, it's, it's very easy to start overthinking things and getting like, like overly critical of myself and wondering for far too long and far too seriously, like, am I doing something wrong? Should I be really doing this at all? Like, what am I doing? You know, what, what did I do to, to reach that level of disparity between subscribers and viewers. I mean, as far as I can figure, it's just because a few of my videos went viral, according to, and it happens every now and then some of my videos go viral, viral just because of YouTube's weird algorithm. It's always just some random old video I uploaded a while ago that YouTube is just seems to lock onto. It's never like my new videos. And I, and I like pour over these videos trying to figure out what magic powder these have attached to them that makes YouTube like them so much. And I've tried recreating them, doing things again, similar to them, but they don't never do quite as well. So I just have to kind of step back, let go, stop tearing myself apart about it. You know, just kind of try to keep making videos. I don't know. I'm thankful. Look, I'm thankful for what I've got and how it's going. I don't mean to suggest that I'm not. I don't want to be like that whiny guy. Be like, oh, why don't I have more viewers? You know, or whatever. But it's, you got it. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. That like, it's people, I feel like every YouTuber to some extent is like constantly looking at their stats and their, I, I, there's like a whole channel, like a whole tab here where I could click on that says analytics. And it's probably to my own demise that I don't really ever click on that because it gets very overwhelming to me. 
it tells me all about my like watch time, views, view du- ad- average view duration, estimated revenue, likes, dislikes, comments, shares, videos and playlists, subscribers, you know, all the stuff going up and down, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, all your top geographies, gender, it's like really easy to get way too deep into this for me. And I feel like that's not really my strength, you know, gaming the system in that regard. Because that's not ever how I was successful in the past, you know. Those, those videos that I have, I mean, maybe, it, I don't know. Maybe that is, maybe I just got to dig deeper into how the some of those videos that did really well, like why those did well. I don't know. I wish they'd just tell me the secret to the algorithm, but they'll never do that. Anyways, I don't, I'm getting into some depressing territory from here. I don't want to, I'll end on a good note uh, by talking about sweatshirts. Um, I have a sweatshirt that I bought in Chicago and it says Chicago on it. And I just want to share that I've been really enjoying wearing it lately. It doesn't have a hood. It's just a sweatshirt, right? Also, lately I... (laughs) I kind of want more zip-up hoodies. Sometimes zip-up hoodies really bother me because they don't have the pocket where you can put your hands in and your hands meet in the middle because there's a zipper in the way. But also sometimes a zip-up hoodie is really good for when you're at the computer a lot because you can take it on and off more often as my my air conditioning goes on and off and the heat fluctuates in here um, because my headphones have a cord and I don't like the cord being inside my sweatshirt. You know, because sometimes I want to get up, take off the headphones or whatever. So if there's no there's no zipper, then I have to take off my headphones to put on the hoodie. So it's a whole thing. But all my hoodies I like the most are s- s- zipperless hoodies. Pullovers, I guess you would call them. Except for my favorite hoodie, my zipper hoodie, is in my car and it's been there for like five months and I don't know why I keep on not bringing it up and it's got a zipper and everything. I think it's like in the floor of the backseat of the floor of my car and I'm like afraid to touch it because I feel like it's got like, you know how stuff you leave in the car for too long, it gets like a weird funk to it or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just my car. It's got like, my car had like a little leak in one of the doors for a while and every time I come out after it rains, there'd be like a little puddle in the back the floor of the back seat and it was disgusting but for some reason that seems to have fixed itself as well as every now and then my uh there's a little light on my dashboard that comes on it says check engine soon i think i think that's what it says oh service engine soon i think and whenever that comes on i'm just like oh i probably need an oil change so i go and get an oil change and then i get a little for the next few weeks I get a little bit more stressed out as that light stays on and I keep on wondering maybe it's something more more serious like I really should take it into the shop and worry about getting shafted as they tell me it's like I need a, I need a new drive train or something but then eventually the light goes off again usually like 3 weeks after I get an oil change Also I had to get new windshield wipers last time I order new windshield wipers on the internet And then I went in to get an oil change, and then they replaced my windshield wipers for me. So now I have a backup pair of windshield wipers in the the trunk. So that's good, I guess. My windshield wipers were doing very poorly. Like the the, uh, rubber strip had like worn off halfway on both of them. Every time I tried to turn the windshield wipers, it was like flapping around. I just couldn't turn them on anymore because I was afraid of like scratching my windshield. So every time I drove somewhere, I was just relying on the rain necks on my windshield to just like make the water bead up and roll off but for it to really roll off you have to be going like 40 45 miles an hour and and the rain is like wearing off because the, i had only been applying the rain x through my windshield wiper fluid which i think is a great way to apply rain x you can only do that if you have windshield wipers you know to kind of spread it around i didn't have windshield wipers and my windshield wiper fluid was running out. So I need to go to like an auto zone or something and get some more windshield wipe, Rain-X windshield wiper fluid. 
So it's like a per- perfect storm of all of my windshield wiper paraphernalia wearing out at all the same time. And so for like a couple of weeks there, every time it rained, I was just like squinting through all these beads of water on my windshield, driving around very dangerously. I mean, I could see, but it was like, it was like camouflaging everything on the road. Like if there was like a person at a crosswalk or something, that would kind of like make them blend in with the background. It was not safe. It was not good. Uh, I'm glad I got my windshield wipers fixed. Anyways, I think that's all I have for today. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I hope this mic was okay. It's a little scary switching up microphones. Apologize if you could, like, hear my nose breathing or too much or something. I'm sorry, okay? All right, bye. Love you. Okay?